Hey Sagittarius, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for November 2018. Alright Sag, so this month, first of all, okay first, I got totally excited. So first of all, the blog is up at stormygrace.com, you can take advantage of it. What I've got posted for you so far are the major astrological transits and aspects for November, December, January, and I'm working on February and going forward. So you can go over, check those out, grab your chart, see the way everything's going to apply and stack up in your own chart and follow it day by day in the month. So enjoy that. Please, it's free. Go check it out. And if you don't have a chart, you can grab one at Stormy Grace as well or click in the description box down below to get to the blog or to the natal chart, okay? All right, now I can go back to being excited. Sag, happy birthday, first and foremost. Second of all, Jupiter's coming home. How exciting is that? Jupiter for 13 months has been in your next door neighbor sign of Scorpio. Now he's gonna move forward this month into your sign. This is Sagittarian expansion and it's at birthday time. So it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous energy. I am very excited to talk about that with you uh, as we break down the month. But also this month, we've got the North Node of Destiny moving from Leo into the sign of Cancer. And I'm even more excited about this because wherever the North Node of Destiny goes, you will fulfill whatever's happening there. Now, because it's in the sign of cancer, we're going to nurture some things a little bit. We may become more emotionally focused on things. You could have more women in your life. This is going to be happening in the eighth house space for you. You could be clearing out debt, having conversations, connections to your family lines. Um, you could be dealing with something with death and transition. These things could certainly be available, but whatever it is, in 18 months, you're going to look back and you're going to be like, I achieved, I whatever, I was successful at whatever. You will have fulfilled a destiny here, and it's so very exciting. Okay, let's jump in and break the month down by date, okay? Right here at the beginning of the month on the 6th is when we have that north node of destiny landing here in, in Cancer in your 8th house. Now, what this also translates into is that the south node of destiny means that it is over in Capricorn along with Saturn and Pluto, but it's going to be in your 2nd house. So we know that the south node is about a little bit of detachment. So don't be surprised if over the next 18 months you show some maturity and detachment about some of these things of value, other people's money, the way that you make money, the way that you regard material possessions, debt. This could definitely be something you work out over the next 18 months. So I'll talk more about that in the North Node of Destiny video, okay? But also on the 6th, we've got Uranus taking a step back into Aries in its retrograde pattern. Now this is going to line up your 5th house space. So instead of during this retrograde, you're having to go back and do all of this work, right? What's happening with this one is that Uranus has already worked on this fifth house for you for seven years. Now you're just backing up to take a quick little check from now until Mars to say, okay, do I still have any bad habits here? Do I have any habits that need to be broken? Do I have any habits in this fifth house that need to be developed? As well, I think it is a beautiful place to take a look around and see how this area of your life has changed. That's the beauty of Uranus. He comes in loud, proud, creates change that is absolutely disruptive, but when he's done, he has left you with the best life version of this area if you take advantage to look back over it and see what it was. So make sure you check out that fifth house area and see what's changed. On the seventh of the month, we've got a new moon happening in Scorpio. A new moon means anything is possible. Now being in Scorpio, it's going to be in the 12th house space. So when I see moons in the 12th house space, I think rest and retreat. This is the time for you to say, what do I need to rest and retreat? When do I need to pause and plug my buttons in? What helps with your downtime? Where's your spiritual life? Where's your quiet life? Now, if you're a student or you're doing something that requires you to be behind the scenes or you work in your behind the scenes, the new moon is a fresh start, right? So from the behind the scenes space, you could have information present itself. The other reason I say you could have information present itself is because Scorpio wants the truth. Scorpio is going to dig down there into the truth. And if you've got some level of truth hiding somewhere in the hidden 12th house space, this could have a new beginning, it could rise to the surface as well. So if you're a researcher, a detective, you're looking for answers, whether they're spiritual or practical, you could have things rising to the surface. It's a beautiful energy for projects that you're not quite ready to launch as well. 
When we get to the 8th, Jupiter enters into Sagittarius. Holler. Okay, so you have Jupiter here until December of 2019. Where Jupiter goes, you already know it's an expansive, optimistic, generous, wise, truth-seeking energy. So over this next handful of months, you could be doing truth seeking. You could be expanding yourself out into the world in some way that we haven't seen you. And when I say out in the world, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to launch yourself out on social media or on that kind of platform. You could be, but this could also just be your very own coming out party. Are you ready for us to see you differently? Are you ready to show up more wise and abundant? You know, think about it in those contexts as well. It's not always this over the top thing, but it is certainly a a place where expansion and your open-mindedness what you know this year is definitely going to shift and change and I think it's gorgeous for you Sagittarius so ride this energy ride it like it's never coming back okay on the 15th, Mars is going to move into the position of Pisces, or excuse me, the sign of Pisces. So Mars in Pisces is not particularly thrilled to be here because Mars wants to go very, very quickly. He wants to do things quickly. And Pisces is a water energy. So Mars is over there sprinting in water. So he's not getting far quickly. But what this energy is phenomenal for, because wherever Mars does go, he's trying to bring energy and action, is sprucing up the fourth house space for you. Home, family, real estate, property. But it also slows us down just a little bit. So if you've had a repair that needs to be made in this fourth house, whether it be in an emotional relationship, something on your inner security that needs to be adjusted, or you need to fix the bathroom. Okay, whatever it is, this is a wonderful energy where Mars is helping you spruce up the home zone, right? This could, whenever I see Mars in the fourth house, I also think that it is a phenomenal idea to do cleaning or dusting or whatever needs to happen in your physical space. You could be moving. That's something that could be happening. Um, but more so taking care of the home zones is I think what this energy is good to slow us down for. On the 16th, we've got an abundance of energy happening. First of all, Venus is coming out of retrograde in the sign of Libra. So now that she's going to be direct in your 11th house, this is great. Venus is phenomenal for attracting friends to you, social things, making you magnetic socially, right? Venus is also, in this 11th house, going to maybe help you see the beauty of your long-range goals, wishes, and dreams. And maybe you haven't been as diplomatic or as willing to negotiate or willing to receive information during the retrograde and now maybe you can hear it. So there's a sense of compromise where the, your friends or your social groups or maybe a guide can help you see what you need to do you know what I mean? They're kind of like giving you information, input on what to do to move things forward. I also think too, if there's any kind of healing between friendships that needs to happen, this is a phenomenal energy. If there is a financial healing that needs to happen between you and friendships or a social group, this is a wonderful energy for that as well, okay? Now, on the same day, Mercury is going retrograde in your sign. Okay, so this first house space, Sagittarius, you have a lot going on this month. You're, you've got a busy energy. So Mercury being retrograde here, first of all, Mercury is our planet of communication. Okay, so it's communication, decision making, it's of the mind, it's our thinking, it's our siblings, writing, um, websites, these kinds of things that we put out there. Now it's going to go retrograde, so it means communications could get a little bit sticky. So here you are with this exciting Jupiter energy and we're like, where's Sag, right? Come see me. But what happened? You're flipped around, so you're not launching yourself out there, right? You maybe be, you're maybe like, late. I need to rethink, I need to re-edit, I need to revise how I'm willing to be out there. And this is a brilliant use of this energy. Before you expand yourself all out there and say, this is the new me, this is my new project, this is my new whatever, make sure it's solid. Mercury is giving you a gift of going back over those things. And I also think that that particular new moon in Scorpio is going to help you to make some peace, clean up some messes if you've had them, have some conversations that maybe need to be had so that when you do launch yourself forward, it's credible and it's free, if that makes any sense. 
All right, on the 22nd, the sun enters into Sagittarius. The first house is lit. It's birthday time. Happy birthday, Sagittarius. But you see the first house, who are you? How are you putting yourself out there is of focus this month. So make sure you look at the vitality here, okay? On the 23rd, we've got a full moon happening in Gemini. So just across the street, which tells us it's in your relationship zone. So we're going to, in a relationship zone, it says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted we're going to create a shift so shifts in relationships could definitely be happening maybe you're having a different kind of conversation in your relationships i think for some of you as well there's been a sense of maturity that's happened and you may be willing to express your needs in a different way whether it's a romantic relationship a partnership um, a business relationship, things like this. Your self, your sense of self-expression, I think, is definitely changing in how you're willing to show up in the world. And I love that for you. Now, on the 24th, as we end the month, Neptune is going to be coming out of retrograde and coming direct. And this is happening again in the fourth house space for you. So I think, you know, I kind of wonder if things in the fourth house, in the home zone, have felt a little in the air or felt a little like, you know, maybe not anything huge and pressury, but just kind of a little something happening back here where you weren't real clear what it was. Because when Neptune is retrograde, we see the vision, we can see it, we feel it, or we feel like there's compassion or something is happening, something's coming, but I just can't put my finger on it. But then Neptune comes direct and we take the dream, the vision, the feeling, the whatever, and we can make it a concrete reality. So I would think that going forward, you're going to have a much better opportunity to not only expand yourself out to the world, but expand and assert yourself in your home zone in the new way you'd like to see this concrete reality play out. And that may be with more compassion. That that may be with more understanding. That may be a different spirituality. Whatever it looks like, though, you're going to try and create a more ideal space in your fourth house zone. So keep me posted on what that looks like, please. Cannot wait to hear about it. Put it in the comments section down below, okay? All right, Sag, happy birthday. Enjoy your month. Keep me posted on what happens here. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.